Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I'm a gambling man by nature. Are you? No. Where's Chad? Such a Chad move. Such a Chad move. It's it's his week. He's not even here. He's not even here. That is the quintessential Chad move. Is he just phoning it in? Like, just in life, really? It's chatting it in. It's chatting it in. <laughs> it's no longer called phoning it in from now on. It's chatting it in. Actually, which is very close to Chattington. Yes. Which, it's, 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 yeah. Chattington the Trash Panda. Actually, I have Chad working on some stuff. Oh, okay. And uh, maybe he'll make an appearance later. But he's doing things for me. All right. Well, right now we're drinking for Harry Falkenberg. Harry Falkenberg. That's how you'd say it. The Harry Falkenberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought us these when we hang out and we already tried them, but we decided to do them on camera. We made, we did not, them on camera. Not a Harry Falkenberg. No, the Harry Falkenberg. You magnificent bastard. Okay, so this is a Lost Vegas distillery. That's cloudy. Let's start with, it is cloudy. Super cloudy. Do we want to start with the straight single malt barley whiskey? Mm hmm Which is, that's a lot of redundancy. Or do we want to start with the 10 grain whiskey? A single malt. Single malt. The cloudiness has me intrigued. The cloudiness. So this is the first legal distillery since Prohibition in Vegas. In Vegas, okay. Well, in Nevada, actually. Mm. And the cork broke, so we replaced it with a wine cork. <laughs> That's uh, so um, really floral, and uh, I'm getting a little bit of. Is that a pine? Wow, that's fruity. It's pear. It's yeah. uh, it's pear. Super pear note. Yeah, that's weird. A really, it is really, a little green. Really sweet pear, because usually pears are kind of light. Yeah, this is like the candied pear you get in that dessert, where it's like a. Is it a poached pear? Is that what it's called? When you get the desserty, anyway. Do they have them at Wendy's? <laughs> I think they have them at the the DQ. <laughs> the DQ. I can do better than DQ. <laughs> Wendy's. You know, I heard that DQ is going out of business. I heard that too. That's a little sad. Well, it uh, used to be like every small town in Texas has a DQ. Considering I hadn't been in 25 years. Yeah, we weren't really helping the cause. <laughs> <laughs> I like to smell. That's better. thin. It's well, it's thin, and I do get the sweet pear that stays with you. It's 45, so it's not watered down. It's just all high notes. It really is all high notes. Like yeah. there's no mids. Yep. There's no base notes. But that being said, the people that like the light, fruity, sweet stuff, yeah, they'll love this. Yeah, there was a light kind of piney note that I was getting on the nose, but I'm not getting it in the taste. Mm -hmm. This smells lemony fresh. And there's, there's there's a little bit of a honey in there. That's what it is. It's a honeyed pear, I think. See, I'm getting. Uh, uh, a lot more floral notes than you, you are, I think. We both get the pear. The pear is yeah, it is floral, and it is like like a greenhouse floral, like like the heady, dense kind of woo. That's yeah, humid, you know. All right, let's compare it to the uh, other, the ten grain. All right, set aside your malt. Yeah, time for the ten grain. And they just categorized that malt we had as as a single malt whiskey. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm guessing it's all barley. I really love the color on this one. Whoa. Um, are they making it? Another really nice nose. They're making all their own stuff. Now this is the five year anniversary edition. I don't know if that means it's five years old. I'm guessing it doesn't. I think the distillery is five years. Yeah, but that's a little misleading. Cool. I mean, it does say the five year celebration. Yeah, it's the five year. I don't, I don't think it's misleading. I just wish I had an age statement somewhere on there. Slippery slope, man, because if you're trying to go for it, Absolute clarity, then it's gonna read like a damn Whoa, cherry, like a damn contract. Yeah, it really is. Whoa, that's a that's like full on candy cherry, even like a cherry bubble gum. Yeah. Wow. They're going. They have a this wheelhouse. is a they have a wheelhouse. It's the light sweet. Yeah, this is uh, um, big league chew. <laughs> Remember yeah. the the yeah. packet you pull out and you yeah. it's shredded. Or bubble tape. You remember bubble tape? Mm -hmm. That was a good one. It never lasted as long as I thought it would. I almost in got my head it's just like multiple this. times trying to do bubble, <laughs> the, like the whole thing of bubble tape. It wasn't ride. that long though. It was long enough. No, I'm thinking I get a roll of bubble tape. I'm thinking it's just like, like a roll. Yeah, it's like a roll of scotch tape. It's gonna last forever. No, no, no. It's no. not like that. No, no. <laughs> it's like two or three times at the roll and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're doing some really nice sweet whiskeys. Ooh, I like the taste of this one better, even though it does taste as cherried and candied as it smells. But they are candy whiskeys. But there's more, 
Yeah, but they're not candied like flavored whiskeys, right? Mm -hmm. They don't taste flavored. They just taste no. These are some natural candy. Really sweet natural candy flavors. Yeah, all natural candy flavors. <laughs> so uh, man, every time I come back to that nose, it's pure. Um, it's remind. It's it's just a candy shop. It's all the little candies you had, like a ring pop or the you know. So based on my man. based on my preferences, I'm not reaching for it time and time again. No, me either. But what would we compare this to? People that love sweet stuff. So Vegas. What is a what is a sweet whiskey that we actually like? Well, there's not many well, <laughs> or I any say, that I, I know say of. actually like. Like we don't like this. This is fine. Yeah. But I want to compare it to something on the uh, more fruitier, floral, sweeter end of the spectrum here. I don't know, man. What about um. Let's do the, uh... What about Clyde Mays? Airy Lucilla. No. I'm thinking of making infused scotch from a scotch I don't enjoy drinking neat. Should I sacrifice the scotch? It's Old Pulteney 12, in case you're wondering. She didn't like the Old Pulteney. I like the Old Pulteney. Yeah, me too. Or... Well, I can see why you wouldn't, because it is a little briny. Yeah. If, if you, you don't, don't like that. Yeah, yeah. Or wait for it to open up with time and aeration. Uh, also, I'm infusing Maker's Mark, trying to make flavored bourbon out of it. What flavors could go with it, except for the obvious vanilla. Uh, so the old Pulteney 12, uh, really just play with that however you want, man. There's not, you know, as long as you don't have let's there think to, about that. there to browbeat you, do whatever you want with your whiskey. Yeah, let's think about that, though, because infusions are good. And I'm, by the way, I can't, the only thing I think of is getting a dull meat that has a wine cask finish. But... No bourbons I know are anywhere near this sweet. Uh, what about Elijah Craig? No, it's not even close, man. I mean, I'll oh, get it out. So, Four Roses is a sweeter bourbon. Yeah, but even then, it's nothing compared All right, to this. you're beyond help. I'm going to use Elijah Craig. So, she's infusing Maker's Mark, uh, trying to make a flavored bourbon out of us. Make, Maker's Mark. Wait, wait, wait. So, hang on a second. I want to come back to that flavored scotch, too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, here's the Elijah Craig. It's note it um has the hint of that same cherry, but it's way more barrel complex. Yeah. But it but taste it, it's so, still pretty sweet. Coming off the heels of this, the nose on this almost is like a peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Right? This is so much more candied. This is you come off the candy and then you go to the Oh, I got fruit roll up this time. Yeah. <laughs> see if you get see if you get peanut brittle out of that. Yeah, I can get the peanut note. Mm-hmm. Peanut. So when you um, when you do infused things, they're really cool for cocktails. So like, um, Halle did this drink, and it's called uh, shit. I don't remember what it's called, but it's using it's a bourbon based cocktail. But they infused jalapenos in a jar with a bourbon. Yeah. And so the bourbon, when mixed into a cocktail, tastes like bourbon, but it's got this burn to it, the cocktail. Yeah. And it's good. All right. Right now, it's not something you would want to just want to sip on neat. Right. It's something that, so here's the thing, if you infuse something interesting with the scotch, but know that what you should be aiming for is not the perfect sipping infusion. Mm -hmm. What you should be aiming for is something that you could use in a cocktail that would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Because in a cocktail, you're only going to get the hints of the whiskey anyway, and so whatever you infuse it with is going to take it the direction of a cocktail. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So what I would wouldn't you... mind doing a jalapeno infused pulp me because really? you get this briny salt butterscotch right. mixed with a like a pepper burn. That's just stacking punishment on top of punishment. I know, and that doesn't sound like something she would like at all. No, 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 no. no. So something, but that's what I would like. maybe on the maybe on the fruitier end of the spectrum there. Did you try that Elijah Craig? I did. It is pretty sweet. It is, yes. Yeah. So I was right. No, it's not like this. I'm not saying it's like this. But all bourbon is sweet to there's, me. So. I, there's, this is in rarefied air. Oh, shit. Oh. Most bourbons don't, or most whiskeys for that matter, don't get this sweet. Mm. This isn't like a Bryn uh, French whiskey. This isn't even the TX whiskey with like the vanilla bomb. Yeah. But this is definitely one of the sweeter whiskeys there. Uh, what flavors should, uh, should could she go with uh, uh, other than vanilla with like the maker's mark? Yeah, I mean vanilla bourbon just feels like it's piling I sugar would, on sugar. I would mess with different fruits, man. Me too. Yeah. Uh, everything from like pears, to apples, um, lychee. <laughs> Have you had the lychee? No, never. Oh my gosh, it's so weird and wonderful. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it texture weird? Oh, oh so weird. I'll never eat it. It's so weird. I you, can't do weird it's texture. It's the texture of like an overgrown peeled grape. Oh, God. That's my worst nightmare. Yeah. Man. Screw that. It's like... No, I'm out. It's like... I'm already out. I'm already creeped out. If the fruit world grew a testicle. 
Luigi. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, that's just wrong. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the malt and see if it's still. Uh, Christopher McWugan, McWagan, McGugan. Uh, could you ca could you cave age whiskey in the U.S. to expose it to similar climate as Scotland to create a more Scotch feel to an American whiskey? If so, uh, does anyone do this? We were yes. actually looking at cave aging. Yes. So here's the problem with cave aging. Well, because we actually we have limestone hillsides that we have we can dig into. We and, could, yeah. But we were turned away from this for. Well, there's only one reason. Yeah. There's only one, and that is airflow. Mm. If you can't get airflow, then you're losing the give and take of the movement in the barrel. Right. And it's just gets, I mean, you can end up with mold issues. It gets stale. So, it's, right. So you could dig a cave, but you're going to have to find a way to create airflow inside of that cave. And so it's nice that we get a more even temperature. Yeah. But you got to find a way to pump air in and out. So it's not just whiskey and barrel and that those are the only factors. It's no. actually the environment that the yeah. barrel is in. That and has a big impact. People have also commented on the channel, like, well, what if you just seal off a barrel to keep the angel share out mm -hmm. or from happening? Well, it's like, well, if you keep the angel share, what you're actually stopping is the movement of the whiskey in and out of the barrel. Right. And that's what ages whiskey. So <laughs> you can't you can't cheat the angels, man. <laughs> they will have gonna, their share. You're gonna get their due. I was playing Far Go back to the single mall. I was playing uh, Far Cry 5, and they have a quest where you're supposed to go dive in the river and pull up all these like 15 different whiskey barrels. Mm. Because um, one of their ancestors had discovered that the greatest way to age a whiskey is underwater. No, oh, and I'm thinking, eh. nah. <laughs> nah, that single malt's weird. Yeah, it got weird now. It's got sour. It got so all the sweetness, which was dominant, that's mm -hmm. gone, and you're left with a young sour note. Yeah, that's weird. Don't go in that order. Yeah, so that ruined it. If you're gonna do single malt, start with the single malt. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we're done. What do you got? I'm one seeing, more comment. I'm seeing if there's a good comment here. Junus. Sure, sure. Just get. Oh yeah, yeah. What about Jones, Smith, Anderson? Yeah, <laughs> I can read those names. Uh, Junus Tertiary. Junus Priest. Tertianen. Junus Tertian. The term handcrafted floats around a lot in the world yeah. of whiskey. What does this mean, as opposed to what machine crafted? We did an episode about this. Actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll link it up here. That's right. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.